Hi friends, it's Shari. Today I'm going to be showing you how to put together the tiny gift box elephant add-on on the gift box as well as using it on a card. So let's start with the gift box first. I've cut mine from some narwhal cardstock, just that basic tiny gift box, and I'm going to score it on all the score lines, put some double-sided adhesive on those little tabs, and create my little box. Once I have this box created, then I can start to decorate it with the pieces in this elephant add-on. So I have all the pieces cut here in my little dish and I'll show you what to do with them. That little bar piece is the piece that goes behind the eyes and fills them in. So I've just cut that from some storm cloud cardstock. And of course the front main face is cut from that same narwhal cardstock as the box. Then there are these little pieces that are the inner parts of the ears. And you can see on the die there that it will cut a little line as a guide to where those pieces go on the front face of the elephant. There's also the little ovals for the rosy cheeks. And then there's also this little bow. Now this could go in the elephant's hair or it could be a bow tie, which is how I'm going to use it on my card. And then there is also a piece that cuts the center of the bow. For mine, I'm just doing them both the same color so you just get the dimension, but you could also use two different colors to create a different color in the center of the bow. Then there's this tiny little peanut, which is just adorable. And on my little box, I'm going to put the peanut in the trunk of the elephant. So you can see that the trunk is cut to where you can tuck stuff behind it like it's holding it. The same goes for the hands of the elephant as well. And then I'm just gonna add this to the front of my box. There's also a little heart that the elephant could hold in its trunk or its hands. Then these two pieces are the back legs and you're just going to put one on each side of the box, lining it up with the bottom right or left corner, that back corner. So it looks like the elephant is sitting down. And I'm just going to add a little bit of white detail to the top of that so you can kind of see it a little better since both of those cardstocks are the same color. Now for the tail, I decided to color the end of the tail just with my marker and darken that up a little bit. And then I'm just going to attach that to the back of the box below that little notch where you can grab hold of it. Now here's the little heart. That could go in the trunk. It could go in their hands. And I thought it would be fun to kind of put it on the bum of the elephant. Sort of like My Little Ponies, how they have the little pictures on their bums. And I just thought that would be kind of cute. So here is that finished tiny gift box elephant add-on. So you get the cute little elephant face on the front. You add the legs to the sides and then the tail at the back. Just adorable. Now let's use the same die cuts and make a card. So I have the same thing here. I have the face of my elephant cut from some narwhal cardstock. I'm going to use some storm cloud cardstock to layer that rectangular piece behind the eyes. And then I will add the inside of the ears. This is cut from some ballet slipper cardstock. And you just wanna make sure you have them turn the right direction. They're a little bigger at the top, but like I said, the die gives you some guidelines, so you make sure that you get them placed properly. And then for the tail on this one, instead of coloring it, I cut two because I wasn't sure what color I wanted. So I just ended up cutting that darker piece off of one of them and I'm just going to layer it onto the lighter piece. So the main part of the tail is the narwhal and then that end is storm cloud. And since this is going on a card, I'm just going to tuck it right behind so it looks like it's coming from behind the elephant. And I'll get to the peanuts and the bow tie when I start to assemble my card. I'm not going to use those just yet. Now for the background of my card, I'm creating a circus tent look. So I have a piece of a speckled eggshell cardstock and it's cut with the largest stitch rectangle. And then I'm using the Sunray background stencil to create the stripes of my circus tent in the background. And I'm pushing it up so that I get some wider stripes 
I am going to be covering up the bottom with like the ring of the circus so I don't need to stencil all the way to the bottom and this just allows me to use those fatter stripes closer to the top. I'm going to be doing my inking in some guava ink on this speckled eggshell cardstock and I really think that the speckled eggshell cardstock holds the ink in a unique way and makes it look a little bit different than if you do this on white. So I'm just working my way from the top to the bottom. I don't mind if it's a little darker at the top, but it ended up being pretty even in the end once that ink soaked in and dried. It doesn't matter that I'm going off the bottom of the stencil at the bottom because as I said before, that is going to get covered up with some cardstock. So I don't need to worry too much about going off the edge of the stencil. So when I pull this away, you'll see I have these really fun circus tent stripes. So now I'm going to make the little stand for my elephant to sit on. So I know you've seen these in pictures of the circus where it's kind of smaller at the top and bigger at the bottom. I have some ovals cut here and these are just my ovals to use as a guide. I'm not going to use these on the card and that's why I'm drawing the center line through them. I'm going to use them as a guide to trace around. So I made a line at the center of my piece of mermaid cardstock. Then I lined up the small oval with that line and traced the top. Now I'm lining up that bigger oval with that line and tracing the bottom. And then I'm just going to connect them with a line with my ruler. I was a little off, so luckily it's pencil. I can erase it and try again a couple times. <laughs> Now I'm going to take that little oval again and layer it back lined up with the top, trace the bottom of it, and then you can see that that is the shape that I'm trying to go for. Now I did want to put some diamonds or triangles on the side of this using some ink. So I'm using my centering ruler to go off the center the same distance in each direction. I made a little tick mark and then I'm just going to connect it to create that A shape. Then I'm going to do the same at the top, just going the same distance off the center, made a little tick mark, and then I'm just going to connect those lines. And then I'm just going to go to the corner with the last one. So you can see I've got that zigzag pattern going on this little elephant stand. Next, I'm going to take a piece of low tack tape and mask some things off so that I can do some inking. I'm going to start with the outermost pieces of this and I'm going to be inking with some peacock ink which is the same kind of color but a bit darker and I'm going to get this really fun tone on tone look for this elephant stand. And it doesn't matter that I'm going to go off the sides and pass my pencil line because I'm going to be cutting that part off once I get all my inking done. It also doesn't matter if I go on the top because I will be covering that up with a die cut stitched oval. So now I can pull off that tape I'm using as a mask. I'm just going to relocate it against one of those other pencil lines and mask off another part of that zigzag. And then once I have that one colored, I'll peel those off one more time. I like that I can keep reusing my tape. I'll line that up with those pencil marks I made earlier. And then I will ink blend that last little piece. And now that I have all these blended, I can cut them out. And I'm just going to use my scissors to cut out that shape. So I'll just cut up each side first. And then I'm going to cut around my pencil line for the oval. Now for the bottom oval, I'm going to show you a little trick. If you aren't very comfortable about following a pencil line and you worry that you might be, not be even, I'm going to take that bigger oval and line it up with my pencil line and kind of give myself a little edge to bump against with my scissors. So that's just a little trick that might make cutting out these things freehanded a little bit easier if you're nervous about it. 
Then I'm just going to use my eraser to erase all of those pencil lines I used as a guide. Now to make the ring of my circus, I'm using the simple road border. This is one of the dies in that set and I like that it had the stitching detail on both sides. I have a piece of craft card stock. This is going to be kind of the dirt floor of the circus ring and I'm going to cut the top of it with that road border so that it is the same arch as the border itself. I'm going to cut the border out of the yellow that you see there to the left. So I'm going to start by cutting the craft. I'll just pull out those pieces that I was using as a guide. I am going to add some tea dye ink to this so that it looks a little bit darker and a little more like dirt and it kind of defines that edge a little bit which is nice. And then I can take this piece of yellow shimmer cardstock, yellow textured shimmer. It's going to have a little bit of shine to it and cut that road border die as well. I'll just layer the piece of craft cardstock along the bottom of my stenciled piece from earlier. And then my road border die is going to fit right against the top of that since I used the same die to cut both of them out. Then I'll just trim off the pieces that are overhanging and there I have my circus ring. For the platform that my elephant's going to stand on, I cut that small stitch oval from some peacock cardstock and I'm just layering that on the top, which has a nice finished edge to it. But I did like the stitching and wanted to add that detail onto the rest of the elephant stand. So I'm using my white gel pen just to add some white stitching details along that design. I'm adding my background panel to a card base before I start to assemble all my elements onto this card. And then I can add my little elephant to the top of my elephant stand. He fits perfectly right on that stitched oval that's the top. And then I'm going to add foam adhesive all over the back of the stand and the elephant and place him in the center of my circus ring. Now here is that bow tie that I cut out with the die and I'm using it as a bow tie this time instead of a little hair bow like I did on the box. And then for my peanuts, I cut them from orange cardstock so that they looked like circus peanuts, like the circus peanuts candy that you buy. <laughs> Now I'm using the fishtail borders and I'm using both the straight and the curved and I've cut both of these from some fog cardstock. So it's that pale pale gray cardstock. And I'm starting with the straight one and I'm just putting a little bit of liquid glue on the back side of the banners that are going to touch my card. I'm lining this up and I like the way that the pennants lined up with the stripes right there in the middle. I thought that was kind of fun. And I'll just trim off the two extra ones that are hanging off the side of the card. Now for the curved one, I didn't want it to line up in the exact same spot, so I thought I would start with a pennant in the middle in that white stripe. And again, I'll just add some liquid glue to the back of each of those and then line this up to where I have a centered pennant on this one. And then again, I'll just trim off that excess on each side. Now I can add my cute little colored flags. I cut these from some red cardstock, some of that same yellow shimmer cardstock, some blue textured cardstock, and then some gold sparkle cardstock. So I have a lot of different things going on here. I have different colors, but every one of these is a different texture or finish to the cardstock as well. And I'm just kind of varying where they go. I really wanted to make sure that the gold ones weren't right next to each other because those really stand out with that glitter. But I like how the yellow ones match. The circus ring, I am going to add some gold stars that will tie in with the gold pennants as well. And then the blue pulls in the blue of the little bow tie 
and the red goes great with that background. Now for the sentiment, I filled the front so much that I didn't really work in a place for the sentiment, but I really liked the look of it. So I'm going to just stamp the sentiment on the inside. And I'm using the Offset Sings Birthday Stamp Set because I like that it has the sentiment that says Wish Big, which I think goes perfect with an elephant on the front of the card. So I have Wish Big and then Wishing You a Very Happy Birthday. And I'm just lining all those up. They're so easy to line up on those rectangular bases. And then I'll just pick this up with the door of my Misty and stamp it on the inside of my card. And here are the gold stars that I added. I added one to each of those little zigzag pieces on the elephant stand which I think really finishes that off nicely and then a couple around in the background and I just think this turned out so adorable I love the orange circus peanuts that might be my favorite part and I also love that elephant stand that I made with the little stars I just think it turned out so cute so now let's take a look at some projects from the design team. Yainea made some super cute elephant boxes and I love the addition of those balloons and the sentiment. I just love Grace's card so much. I love the coloring on the elephant and I love it hugging that cute little star with a smile. I just think this is so sweet. Kara made a really cute box and she added in the mice from Elephant Parade which I just think is so much fun. And then I love Elena's card with that elephant peeking out through the secret garden window with all those really pretty flowers. And then here is another look at the tiny gift box elephant that I created in today's video, as well as the circus theme card that I created with that tiny gift box elephant add-on. Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day. Bye.